Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So this is a $340 carved top single cut. This flame is insanely nice. Look at that figuring. And this relatively inexpensive guitar actually has blacksmith stainless steel frets. That's insane. So is this the best budget single cut guitar ever? Well, not quite, but it is close. Let me explain. Let's take a closer look. So before we get into it, and I say this every time I do a Harley Benton Showcase video, I've been impressed with one, how successful they've been with a name that's as bad as Harley Benton, and two, I've been a big fan of how they've been pushing what's possible in the budget guitar space for a few years to where I've taken a very limited role in helping them spec and introduce certain specialty models. For the record, this is not one of them. I had nothing to do with this. They sent this SC-552 over for us to check out together, and there were a couple of spec decisions made with this model that I would have done differently. So do with that information as you will. Clearly, even with the association, I'm gonna say whatever the fuck I want about this guitar, but I still think that disclosure is important. And with that, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so the specs are pretty much the same as the first version, and it was pretty traditional apart from that very significant upgrade. Mahogany body with an actual maple cap, and then of course this ridiculously figured flame veneer. Mahogany neck with a Palferro fingerboard, which is the current go-to standard for a more responsible alternative to rosewood. And I don't know how many times I can get amazed by how good the import factories have gotten at producing gorgeous veneer finishes in such a short period of time. Like it really wasn't too long ago when everything was like photo flame finishes or really flat looking veneers. All of a sudden the stained veneers have depth and character normally only found on proper figured caps and they just keep getting better. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
And I chose this color because I think it's the most impressive for the thumbnail. <laughs> Gotta play that YouTube game. But if Black Cherry Flame isn't your thing, the SC-552 also comes in Paradise Amber Flame, which I'm pretty sure is a Guns N' Roses reference, Faded Tobacco Flame, Desert Flame Burst, and then a Silver Burst. I was so tempted for the Silver Burst, man, especially given it's the cheapest one. And do you know how stupid expensive Silver Burst single cuts have gotten? Fucking <laughs> thanks for nothing, Adam Jones. Now, one of the biggest differences between this and the original SE550 that I was really impressed with back in 2017 is that since then, the SC550's production has been switched around to a bunch of different factories. That one I tried was made in Vietnam. I believe it was the same factory LTD was using for their EC256s at the time. And I've actually heard from ESP, they had the same problem with that factory that Harley Benton did. Quality was wildly inconsistent. I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about any of this because it's very behind the scenes knowledge that no one's supposed to know, but whatever, we move. So anyways, no Harley Bentons and no LTDs either, for that matter, are made there anymore. This current generation of SC-552, as the eagle eyed amongst you might have caught from the serial number, starting with WI, is actually made at World Music's Indonesia facility. And because production was moved to a better facility, the overall feel, build quality, and consistency is much better, and they were able to do cool stuff like add the stainless steel frets. <laughs> These frets, man, it's such a huge upgrade. As I said, the factory is really good, so the fretwork itself is really impressive on a budget guitar, and the bend's on stainless, man. It's like playing on glass. Also, the fact that they're so hard and they keep their shape and polish and you never have to refret it. I love stainless, man. It's like having fretwork that defies time. They're also jumbo-sized, which was an interesting surprise on a vintage style guitar. So this is where the guitar really confuses me a bit. The stainless steel frets don't have the warm vintage sound of nickel frets and it doesn't really make sense to have them on this instead of the more modern focused SE Custom that still has nickel frets. Also the massive frets are not very traditional either. It certainly doesn't match the vibe of the old school snot colored tuning keys and the whole thing just seems to be a very confused mashup of vintage and modern like it doesn't know exactly what it's trying to be. But shut up, stainless steel frets are great, we move. <laughs> Another big upgrade, in my opinion, is that the neck shape is no longer a thin D profile, but more of a 60s slim taper. That was one thing that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me on the original having this thin, flat neck on a vintage-inspired guitar. They've kept the traditional-ish neck joint from the SC551. It's kind of like an angled take on the block joint. Then this rounder profile makes a lot more sense, and it feels... Right. There's also new body chambering, so the guitar isn't a f***ing boat anchor like the original SC550 I tried. This is a much more reasonable 8-ish pounds, and that feels right for this style of guitar. And this is actually a proper carved maple cap under the veneer. The veneer hasn't just been slapped directly onto a carved mahogany body like in years past. I confirmed that with Lassa at Harley Benton, who specced the guitar out and oversaw the production. And then, not because I didn't believe him, but I popped the neck pickup out just to double check myself. Now, it is a little difficult to see since the cavities have been lined with black shielded paint, but when you look close, there is a noticeable shift from mahogany to the tighter grain maple in there. You can also see where the neck is glued to the body. It's short tenon, like you'd expect. At this price, I would have been very, very surprised if it was long tenon, but it was nice to see how clean the pickup cavity was. It was also nice to confirm the new Tesla Opus pickups that have replaced the Roswell HAFs are the four conductor versions, so you can split them after the fact with push-pull pots if you wanted to. Because these new Tesla pickups, they're all right. I mean, they're pretty good. They've got Alnico 5 magnets, they're reasonably balanced, and I mean, I think they're better than the Roswells. They're along the same line as the Roswell HAFs, but they have a little more character, they're a little less muddy. And the Roswells were already very usable, as is the hardware, the Korean DLX hardware feels great, 
doesn't increase the cost in the same way name brand stuff would. The nut is listed as graphite. It's clearly not. I mean, look at the color. To me, it feels like some sort of generic brand graph tech. It's cut well and didn't give me any problems with tuning stability. And that's what makes these Harley Bentons at this, uh, I don't know, higher budget level, I guess, such great mod platforms. Just replace the pickups to taste. Since I was opening up the guitar to check the pickup cavity anyways, thought may as well check the control cavity too. The shielded paint application isn't quite as clean, but it's not bad. Really just wanted to check the pots, and turns out they're large Korean alpha pots. It's so nice to see the cheap, shitty pig iron mini pots being phased out of these affordable import guitars. <laughs> So everything sounds good and this is a heck of guitar for 300 bucks ish depending on which version you get. Harley Benton have listened to the feedback and they've solved a lot of the issues with the old version. Basically unlike the SC551 this isn't a fucking boat anchor which was easily the biggest drawback of the original. Then they've also changed the neck shape to be more traditional. Build quality is also up. I mean, you could do a lot worse than world music for import factories. The new Tesla pickups, they're kind of an upgrade, I guess, but it's the stainless steel frets. That's a massive upgrade on this budget guitar and it feels awesome. I still don't know if this was the right model in Harley Benton single cut lineup to add stainless steel frets to. As a metal guy that loves rest mods and modern takes on the classics, like I've upgraded both my 70s Les Paul Customs with stainless steel frets, personally, I love it. But I don't know what the reasoning or the thinking behind the decision was. Maybe it was as simple as we can do it, so why not? Who knows? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I am not complaining at all. But back to the original question at the very beginning of the video, is this the best budget single cut? No. That would obviously be my signature because of the roasted maple neck, glow-in-the-dark inlay, slightly more rounded profile, which in my opinion is way more comfortable, and the custom-voiced Seraphim pickups that sound absolutely phenomenal. Speaking of which, what do you guys think of these colors? But those are just my thoughts and quick takes on the new Harley Benton SC552. Weird spec mix, but a very good guitar for the money. And I'd love to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Massive thanks to Harley Benton for sending this guitar over for us to check out together and for sponsoring the video. Also, huge thanks to Luke Kramer for doing an awesome job with the mix and to Connor for editing the video. And of course, shout out to my amazing patrons for making all this content and expanding the team to make even better videos possible. Product affiliate, social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.